For people looking in from the outside, you are essentially a character. They don't know who you are. They don't know what your background is. They don't know what you look like. They don't know what job you've got. Mm. They don't know any of that. They just know you as that name that they see or that person that they hear. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Box created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Um, right. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London, essential as you need to be, could be. You know the deal. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Maybe boy's got the Keller Vision app. My goodness, you know, we take it international out here. We take it local and into your neighbourhoods and wherever you want to be. If you haven't got the Television app, then you know what to do. Download free app, app store, iPhone, Android. Inside the place, we have a gentleman that has travelled. He's come all this way, London. Oh, I say all this way, it's not too far. <laughs> Hometowns, man. I tell you what, I get nothing but love from Birmingham. And to have a guest in, travelling down, means the world to me. Originally far one, goes into P1, FKS, SSM, FT, CRZ, DLS, look, look the runs. We can run it off a <laughs> GQ is inside the place. How are you, my brother? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's good Yo! to see you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it when people come into the into the pod trap from, uh, from yeah, our man. locations. Man. I like visiting places. <laughs> <laughs> he likes getting about, man. Yeah, First of yeah. all, if you're not uh, listening, uh, watching and listening, I'll say big up for the hoodie right here. GQ is most definitely inside the place. Yo, I have, uh, I mean, we're in for a treat with the podcast because we've got some mixed genre street culture activity going on here, bro. Yeah, Thank man, you so much. have done a little bit of everything, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for the hoodie. This is well, so you cool. Gotta have that, you've got to have Mr. Keller on there, innit? Yeah, you've got to represent, man. Tell you, man, like, this is, says Killer Keller on it. Yeah, you know I mean, it's, uh, Chica- it's Chicano, isn't it, style? Isn't kind it? of, yeah. Like, I think it's, it comes from like a style called calligraphy, which is like half hand style, half calligraphy, half tattoo lettering, yeah, half. Let me be a metalhead out in the open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the closet is open. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I thought upgraded, bro. I'm upgraded out here. Yeah, yeah see. Pimping and chipping. Just got your day, you know. Yeah, there's some lineage inside the place. Um, and I know there's some people out there watching right now that are very really well aware of your your activities over the years, man. Maybe. 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 I'm, I don't know. I'm a bit humble about that shit, to be fair. But, yeah, there might be a few people in Birmingham that know, know of my activities over the years. If you kept the, you've kept the GQism and all the other aspects of your um, artistry in graph and otherwise quite separate, right? Yeah, so like, uh, as I've got older and like, obviously you've got like more responsibilities and stuff. Um, like you do your twenty five years in graph, like I've done, bro, mm-hmm. and you start looking at like, what what can I get back? What mm. like you know I've put all my stuff out there for that amount of time. What what can I use? The skills that I've acquired over them twenty five years to to start making me money. <laughs> like, what's that thing? You know that thing that that that, that, that ready, ready, she ready. Yeah, no, no. You know what I mean. Yeah. So, um, yeah, basically, what I did was, um, I kind of almost did like a social experiment with the G- GQism thing. That like, um, I kind of didn't really want anyone from Brom to know that it was like a hundred percent me. Like. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give some a shout out now, yeah. Hold tight, some. So some was like My sniffing guy. around and that, and I managed to maybe give him a little bullshit story to sort of throw him off the scent a little bit. Hold maybe. on, can we get the spice <laughs> alert up? Right, right, so <laughs> maybe, maybe just the. So what did you say? How did you how did you defer defer attention to what you were doing? On the so, man like some. So so basically like. I thought about it long and hard, man, when I started the GQism thing. That I, I almost came up with like a full backstory of who this guy was that wasn't me. That's so sick. Just, just to kind of like almost give it like a character, because I know, like you know, like obviously, like on social media and stuff, you can kind of be whoever you want to be. Like mm. there's TV programs called Catfish and shit, like that have millions of people that watch it and love it. Um, 
So basically, I did like a bit of a backstory about like where this guy came from, the kind of age that he was, like what his influences were and that kind of shit. And that's that's what I put out on the internet to start with. Um, purely just because I can't... I, like you said at the beginning, I just wanted to keep it completely separate from like what I'd done in graph up until that point. And then I was doing it like as a social experiment almost to kind of like see if um, you can you can use social media to to your advantage without people knowing who you are. Mm. In a catfish kind of way. Sort of. So, no, no, I know what you mean. Well, you know, I, I it, it wasn't necessarily set up to be a catfish. It was kind of like set up to just distance who I am that mm -hmm. everyone knows in Brum to what I wanted to do with that. Shall I tell you why that's super important? Back in the day, and I can only re re refer it back to like when, when I was in arts, doing arts at school, like I was never, I had a really bad attention span for it, you know what I mean? Because I'd found this culture and... Um, this music culture and I was really like into it and also I think from school they always used to press on you always justify every decision you make in the creative process which only now when you realise it it's like, actually that's a pretty good idea because you ain't going to be a brand <laughs> or anything if you don't do shit like that right, exactly. so what you basically did there was take it back to the source yeah man I wanted to I wanted to create a brand mm. that, that wasn't something I was already known for as me that's fucking smart. If that makes sense. Yeah. So like, yeah, big shout out to Som. Oh, <laughs> you Som. guessed it, bro. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this podcast for? <laughs> bro, bro, bro. I got a lot of time for Som, man. Yeah. He, he's he's making moves, doing his thing, man. Like, yeah, I, I'm geez. kind of on the same kind of like vibe as him, man. Like, like, obviously you get like more responsibilities, mortgage, kids, like nine to five, that kind of thing. One of the nicest dudes as well. One of yeah, the man. Dudes. Like, I... I uh, we spoke earlier, man, and like, uh, you know, out of everyone, I think in in Bromgraph, we've probably got like a very similar kind of timeline to to our graph journey in Brom. Like, I think we both started around the same kind of time, like ninety five, ninety six. Mm, 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 mm. um, if we, you haven't checked out the Sun podcast, yeah, man, do it. Trust a lot me. of knowledge on there, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we started kind of the same time. We crossed paths like throughout that period being from different sides of the city so it wasn't regular but it still happened yeah. um obviously like he came he came through on the side of the city with like Corsa and mm -hmm. I came through on the side of the city with Krem it's important that we get the demo the geographics here because there is a there is there are certain traits for different areas of Birmingham so I'm led to to understand mm -hmm. to understand so Break that down for people from out of, out of town, out of country. Okay, so east side of Brom generally is like your heavy hitters, like your, your bombers, your people that get up, your people that like put the work in. Um, they've got the clean dub styles. They've got them like 90s fills locked down with the... <laughs> Like, I can't even do them, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> baffles me. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, you've got Southside. Generally, like, in my opinion, however this is going to piss people off, is where you kind of, like, um, your letter smiths come from. Mm, okay. So, like, generally, I would say, like, the majority of people from Southside are Brom. Kind of more on the forefront of, like, pushing lettering mm. mm -hmm. and trying to evolve it and make it less like the Brom style. Reckon, okay. And then east side is you like cut and dry Brom style, mm. like bangers, mm. dub styles, like, yeah, man, like I've got a lot of time for east side. Like mm. that, you know, like obviously coming from south side, I didn't see a lot of their stuff growing up. It was mm. more, like I said, everything on my side of the city. Mm. But when I did see what they were doing, I was like, fuck. Mm. How are they getting up so much, man? Mm. Like, I, it, it was different. It was completely different. Like, Southside, it wasn't so much about bombing. It was more about, like, um, 
clean lines, mm. unlike mm-hmm. um, Zuki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Zuki, is he Cra- self right? He's yeah. I think he started off self, and then he might have moved in later life, maybe. But yeah, like he he's definitely one of like the the old South Side guys. And then you've got like Krem, Merco, mm. Mefo. Krem, man. Yeah, King Krem. Mm. Um, and big up Zuki, you know, we do the podcast. If you don't know, get to know, trust me. Yeah, man. Always got a lot of time for Zuki. Mm, legend. Yeah, me, me and him get on well, mm. man. Um, yeah, so like in my opinion, it, it, whether right or wrong, that it, obviously it's my opinion. It's not, it's not. It's not concrete, in, you understand. Yeah, it's, it's not bit. written in stone, man. It's just my opinion from like what I've experienced growing up is, is generally that like, you get the guys that are like dropping the wild styles and like the kind of almost like European style lettering from like Germany and Spain and that kind of thing. Mm. Generally, I think that comes out of like Southside. I don't know whether they're they're a a bit more open to kind of like Mm. trying to push the lettering a bit more. And comment below, by the way. Feel free to jump in. Whereas like the... The the east side is like, like they get up, man, mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. and it's like in your face. It's there. Mm, mm. Like east side excites <laughs> me, man. When I see east side graph, I like it, man. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I'm not that. Um, my my thing is, I got like mad OCD, bro. So it's like cutbacks for hours. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, your pieces are like. They're, they're a, a case study in detail. And like you say, th- I do feel like when it comes to Birmingham, there's a real heavy presence on just the devil, the detail, the, the intricacies. The, and I think that's what helps create the Brum style. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's part of the course. It's part of the Some tradition. of that is one upmanship as well, man. Like, we ain't gonna lie. Everyone mm. that does graphs are narcissist, right? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they don't admit it actually is the fact that, that there is a level of narcissism. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, oh, what can I do better? What what makes my piece stand out more from that person's piece when we're doing similar kind of styles? Because we've all, you know, we've all grown up looking at the same graph. Um, that's a badass. That that in itself is that's what takes the the scene higher. That's what. Yeah, man. Look, what detail can I add in? What yeah. little extra bit can I do? What like. What I, what have I seen someone do, I don't know, say in America that they're not doing in the UK, mm, mm. that I can put on my piece and then at least for like a couple of months before other people start doing it, mm-hmm. it makes your stuff stand out from other people's paintings because you're putting those little yeah. things into your letters or your fills or, or your backgrounds or that kind of thing. Mm. Um I think that's why Gent gets rated so high, man, because mm. his mm. attention to detail is mm. just, like, it's next level, man. Yeah, 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 big up, Gent, yeah. And, like, knowing it, like, I've known him years, man, like, just just knowing his thought process behind what he does, like, it is literally just because he loves graph. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it's, th- there's no hidden anything, man. Like, he just loves graph, man. Uh, it comes out in the work, man. It comes out in yeah. the work. And I I think some people lose that eventually. Like, the older you get, you, you start, like, losing that love for graph a little bit. Hmm. Doesn't that... Isn't no, that with well, everything? Well, not even, like, the love for graph, man. Like, it's an, it's, it's an addiction, bro. Like, if you drink, then you drink. Like, if you do graph, then mm-hmm. you do graph. Like, it's hard to put it down, man. But it's like everything that's creative, isn't it? Like, there, there's, there's seasons for it in yourself. Yeah, well, yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I've been through loads of different things. Like I did loads of bombing when I was a kid. Then I stopped. Then I did music for a bit. Then I stopped. Then I went back to graph. Like I, I, I kind of have to like compartmentalize stuff <laughs> into like I'm doing music now. Nothing else matters. Mm. Or like I'm doing graph now. Nothing else matters. Or like same with the GQ thing. Like now I'm doing this thing. Nothing else matters. I think for my attention to work on the level that it needs to work at to do what I do, mm. to, I suppose, match up with, like, my OCD and maybe even, like, AD, I've probably got ADHD as well. But yeah, like, I think that's coming through here on this one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it for me, for me to, like, have that concentration and put the amount of 
effort and um, I don't even know how to explain it, man. Like ju just the amount of time and love that I have to put into something for me to like it myself. Mm. I can't have any other distractions around it. But I think a lot of people that are seeing this, especially from a t-shirt um, hoodie point of view, and also the products that you're doing, and that it comes from a certain place. It comes from a, 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 a timeline of creative um, decisions and input and projects that by the time you get to the point where you are now, which is, is the beginning, I would argue. Like yeah, in, yeah, look, in, it's, on a, it's a fresh thing, man. Yeah, yeah. So, but there, but there's a load of creative things that you do all the way on your on your journey, and you just we just find places as it, as as things happen, we put them in a box, forget about them, put them in a box. Forget, but then, as you get to these bigger projects, you suddenly say, "Oh, hold on, I remember when I did that on that thing, and that really worked." If you don't have that as a timeline, then it does come back. Yeah, things like do you, come back. you get your own reference points, I mm. suppose. Same with like, obviously I did like the lettering and stuff and then um, during the lockdowns I, I like fully got into, like I went down, <laughs> I went down a rabbit hole of like tattoo lettering and stuff. Mm. Um, on that note, big up Spire, man. Hold tight Spire. Dirty yeah, letters, sacred lettering. Sacred lettering, yeah, man. They're they doing are... a thing right now. Like yeah. I got a lot of, like, I like the, the, the crossover between like the tattoo artist and the graph artist and it's like, yeah. It's what's been happening in LA for I don't know how long. I think the thing with right, sacred lettering right now, I'm saying as a force of style approaches into that into that into that that Chicano style of yeah, graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's vast. Yeah, man, there's like there, there's so many styles within that that genre of lettering. It's like pick which one you like and yeah. go with it like yeah. like I'll touch Nero as well. I mean, the, the the crew itself is like, yo, that's yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. I, and and look, Nero, I, I, let me let me just hold this here. In terms of his creative ability, Bro, not just that man, his work mm, rate, yeah, Fuck, mad. Man, like, I don't even like when you see his stuff. It's like yeah, and the same the same with Spire, all those guys, man, fucking. And then in Brom, we got our own. We've got our own guy doing that, man. Which is Reese PSA thirty six. Old tight Reese. Yeah, man. That's that's whose studio. I Candy Tattoo Studio in Kingston. Yeah, hold tight. I can. Yeah, block, man. Block. <laughs> yeah, people. Um, like he's been doing that stuff for years, man. Um, and I've rated him yeah. since day. Like, I've, to be fair, I think the first graph artist that I met. Outside of like Krem and all the, the old FKS heads that used to like hang around in Southside and stuff, I think he was the first graph writer of a similar age that to me that I actually met and like um, like shared black books with and stuff. For real? So like I've known Reese for pretty much my full 25 years of like graph man, like in and out and stuff. Like obviously like he's an ultimate grafter, bro. Like. Mm. There's Those are probably, the best relationships as well. Yeah, man. Like he does his thing. There's not a lot of people that are putting the work rate in that that he does, man. Like you know, he opened his own tattoo shop. Like he's been mm. tattooing for years. Um, he's got me as an apprentice. That's right. Yeah. There you go. Uh, he's got a couple of others. He's got you know junior it. artists. Like the studio. It, it it's it's literally on the on the start of its journey, man. I, I need think to get in there hard. I need to. Uh, you need to go and see him. I get man. enough people saying have a ta have a tattoo, but it's like you know. It, tattoos are on it, about experiences, aren't they? They they they're the moment in time that you want yeah, to Yeah, man. They don't they don't all necessarily. You lot just yeah, I know. You oh, lot yeah, just go yeah, bang, bang, just, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, I know. But I ain't about that. But I want something that is like phew, that yeah, means something. It yeah. has to, yeah. A lot of mine do, and then and then some of them don't. Mm. Like so, some of them are more about who's done it. That that's the that's the experience mm, of the yeah. tattoo rather than what the tattoo is. What's your theory on it? Just on the, on the subject of tattoo, because yeah, yeah. you know, there's Mashcow and people like that. They're doing some crazy, like, mate, what the fuck's going on with this guy? Have you, have you seen? Have you seen that he started posting people that have copied his shit? No. Really? <laughs> so See, he's got I'm like fucking biters. He's man. got he's got like his amazing like what the fuck yeah. tattoo, and then a full on like what the fuck is yeah, that yeah, tattoo yeah. next to it? Biters. It's bad, but. I can't remember. I, I heard this somewhere that like biting is like the the ultimate form of flattery. 
So I'm almost form, I'm a form of flattening. I'm yeah, a man, fuck, like, yo, don't be biting in one shit. circles, right? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. rolling in grass circles. It's a, that's a <laughs> slap, that is. <laughs> the ultimate form of flattening. <laughs> yeah, 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 100%. But, um, yeah, man, like, I, I rate Reese a lot, man, for, like, what he's doing. Like, mm. um, also, big up my boys, men's. Aggie. Yeah, let's get into some men's and that because obviously, like these are these are these are the people that run parallel in your your life. Yeah, yeah, right? man. So like, first time I met men's was with um, I was a kid, man. Like my nan used to live around the corner from where like pretty much all the DBT guys used to chill out. So like when I when yeah. I was a kid, I was like thirteen. I'd moved to a new area. A uh, couple of kids, like one kid had a nan that lived up my road and like he used to like write on lampposts and shit and I was like, wow, what's this? I've never seen anyone tagging anything before. And then... Uh, so young, wow. Yeah, like 12, 13, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 12, 95, 95. Um, and I kind of like got in with him, man, because we was both into BMXing and like I seen him writing on shit and I was like, okay, I'm going to write on shit, man. Mm. You know, when you do that horrible like pointy janky fucking... Man, I know you come to mention it. I do remember a couple you know of times. Like... You know that, that A that's like... Yeah. And it's all pointy and shit, like yeah. me metal Comment fucking below. band writing yeah, 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 yeah. before it was a thing. I had a tag like that, man, I swear. We I call it know. naive. For yeah, man, you just, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a graph writer. Mm -hmm. I've got a permanent marker out my nan's cupboard and that. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, writing yeah. on shit that no one can see. <laughs> um, but i got a pen, though. Yeah, you trust me. Always in the pocket. Mm. Uh... And then his cousin actually used to chill with Krem, man. So I was like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's a lot. People I'm seeing around my area and like, that's what I wanted to be. Mm. As soon as I got the bug, man, bad. I went and uh, I went to <laughs> I went to the library and racked Subway art and spray can art. How many times Come we heard this story? Library, man. How many times we heard this story on a podcast? I'll tell you, that's that. If it wasn't for that book, and those... well, some kids had porn under their pillow and that man, <laughs> I had fucking subway art and spray can art. <laughs> and like my mum and dad used to go to bed and I whip out, get the covers <laughs> over and the torch out, and I'd have the subway art out. Uh, so I had that, and then I was just like, "Fuck this, this shit!" Like it, it just hit a, I don't know, man. It hit a note with me. Mm. I did before that. I kind of didn't really feel like. I can't, not like fitted in, but like I weren't into football, didn't really like sports and that. Mm. Um, did a little bit of boxing, but kind of more just sort of didn't mm. get picked on at school rather than I was into it. The beautiful thing about the way uh, Graf was um, imported over here was it was so inclusive of the major cities in the UK. And, yeah, man. and it just like gold, the whole type gold. Goldie is, you know, and again, and you know, Doc Scott. They've been on the, the the podcast, and again, like it just feels Zuki. Everybody was just—it was almost like a forward march in just grabbing this idea of graph and just—and it was accepted in so many different territories, a demographic of the country. Yeah, man. It, I, I, I don't know, man. It was like for me, it was sort of like, wow, I can like fit into something, but it doesn't really matter what I'm like. Mm. Level playing field. I'm. I just do graph. Just so be like, great. I just fit in with. The other people that do graph, mm. it wasn't necessarily like, oh, I'm bad or I'm mm. a road man or... Yeah, it's not demographic, it's not your colour, it's it, not your age, it's yeah, nothing. Yeah, it wasn't none of that. It was like, oh, as long as you can like drop a tag and do a fucking dumb mm. piece like when you was a kid, then you kind of then got accepted into this like subculture, man. Mm. And big up all the women that are doing graph as well. Some yeah, 100%, the sickest man. Sickest writers out there from all walks of life, man. Mad C, yeah? Mad C paints better than 95% of all you guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hold tight, Mad C. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, I don't know, man. And Yeah, so anyway, back to the story about men. So yeah, sorry, like that, I'm digressing. Yeah, yeah, I'm like that, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to be in control of this, going to carry on. <laughs> yeah. he, uh, he, he used to be basically like Krem's sort of like, Right, a man like he, like oh, I suppose almost like his apprentice, man. Mm. Prodigy, yeah. Because like obviously, Krem was a lot older than us, and then Men Men's is a few years older than me. So like when I was like thirteen, he was probably like just that sort of school leaving age, mm. maybe. Okay. Which generally, I suppose, is like when you start getting more like deeper into graph, because then you like you're either at a job or you go college or like you kind of feel a bit more free as like mm. a, a young person to mm. like 
well, this is what I'm doing and this is who I am kind of thing. Um, And I used to just go and sit and watch them all black book, man. Like, literally, like, silent boy in the corner, like... That sounds like me. To... That sounds like me most weeks, bro. Like... <laughs> and I used to just sit and do like outlines for hours, man. And I'd just sit there and be amazed. Yeah. And then I kind of lost. I sort of lost touch with with all of them, luck, man, for four or five years, maybe, maybe Why is even that? longer than that. Why I, is that? Just I kind of just lone wolfed it, man. Hmm. I can't. I, I used to like doing graph on my own. Hmm. I didn't really do it to be around other people. I just did it because I love graph. It's funny, isn't it, how people's, their journeys, would that be because, would that be because of the influence of being on early doors so close to the action, but not actually... Being part of it. Mm. Maybe, maybe. Because then, obviously, like, all them, like, used to go out painting and stuff, but because I was so young and and, and whatever, like, they'd be going out at, like, 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'm, like, back home, Fucking mm. watching Euro Trash or some shit. But I guess they can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Comment below. You know what we're talking about. <laughs> but here's the thing. Um, it's like when you're in music, when you're when you're a sound engineer and you've got someone that's kind of, I don't know, just a runner. That runner gets to see all the amazing artists come through but never gets the chance to, you know, mix for them. Never gets a chance yeah, to yeah, yeah, pop get, yeah. politic with the... The, the guest artists themselves, they're under the arm of the... They're the apprentice. Yeah, that, I, I suppose, yeah, that could have been kind of part of it, I suppose. Um, yeah, I just did graph on my own for ages, man. Like, I used to just go out on my own, bombing at, like, fucking one in the morning for, like, four hours and just, like... Do you like that? Do you like the, the isolation approach of being on your ones? Yeah, I probably do a little bit. Is that, a, is that a mindset? Is that something of a private affair? Or is it just like you'd... Because you seem like a, quite a social cat. And you've, you've got these mad writers that you kind of aspire and you par, spar with on a on a bench but, level. Mm, I, I, I think at the time it might have been that, like, in my mind, I was like, I'm not ready to be, like, out with these guys because I'm not on their level, so I need to up my game. Mm, mm. And then my, me upping my game was going out and putting that work in, like on my own, mm. just working on it. It's the only way to do it. Until I got to a point where I was like, okay, mm. now I can, now I think I'm on that level, maybe I'll mm. get back in touch. And also having a third party turn around to the people that you're spying with on, you know, in the downtime going, yo, you seen that guy? Yeah, exactly. You got that little, that, back to that narcissism, man. <laughs> <laughs> Always find a third party to, to, to boost you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get that part and then they're like, oh, okay. okay. Oh, you're him? Other, other oh. people are noticing mm-hmm. that. Okay, yeah, I like that. Um, and then I kind of just took time out doing music, man. Mm-hmm. Like complete. Well, do I want 360 out? Just bam, different direction. Yeah. And then again, that was, that was so I started doing music on my own. Um, I just knew people that made beats and stuff. I used to just record in my room, like I'm on my one. Well, spitting bars, MC. Yeah, da, da, da. just rapping, just writing some random. I used to love. That's GQ. Uh, no, so this was a far one. That's far one, which was also so, your. So right. was the graph yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. So you had so both. I, of them. I kind of stuck to it. Um, I love that. I love it when artists do that, though. Why not, man? It's You're so the same sick. person, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah just, I love it. That I, yeah. I like that. That you've got a character, right? Mm. That does those things because. Mm. For people looking in from the outside, you are essentially a character. They don't know who you are. They don't know what your background is. They don't know what you look like. They don't know what job you've got. Mm. They don't know any of that. They just know you as that name that they see or that person that they hear. Mm. So, And also, I love the fact that people have their own interpretation of what you are to them. That's well, another yeah, exactly. really cool like, thing. There's people that I bump into now that still know me for when I did music, but yeah. not really for the graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's people that I graph with that probably don't even know that I rapped at any point. That, like, see, that's the best. Isn't so it? like, and then you go, oh, yeah, yeah, I did blah, blah, blah. And they're like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, 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 yeah totally. That. Totally. And you're like, oh, it was so... Oh, okay. That shit's cool as fuck, isn't it? Yeah, 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 I like that. So yeah, I just did music for a bit, man. And then... um I bumped into a couple of people, um, Mr. Dialysis and Wallix. I think Mr. Dialysis was like just getting signed to the Streets label for like a an EP and a single or something. Mm, like when I bumped into him. Mm-hmm. So it weren't like it weren't big moves, but it was like 
You're in the right company. First step on the ladder kind of thing. We did a couple of bits for like Kerrang Radio and, and sort of like local stuff in Brom. Yo, Kerrang Radio. And again, you know, you know, Birmingham holds so many torches for music genres, you know. I used to go to the Kerrang Radio station. Mate. Shit was wicked. Yeah. Big up Christian Stevenson, all the crew there but back like, in the day. I mean, like the kind of, like the, the sort of rap that we did back in the day was like, I suppose it was classed as like emo rap, man. <laughs> Because we didn't look like your stereotypical, like, rap. Mm -hmm. We was wearing, like, skinny jeans and had them stupid, like, mm. chemi My Chemical yeah, Romance yeah. fringes and shit. Do you know the but Dirt Boys? Was... You know Dirt Boys? They're, yeah, 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 yeah. Pick yeah, yeah. yeah. up the Dirt Boys. Because yeah, they're that on that kind, kind of, of emo thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we was doing that, like, fuck, man, know, 14 years ago. Mm. Probably long, no, 16 years ago. Um, we did a couple of bits of for Kerrang and then like we sort of like just drifted apart man like they was doing different things um again I kind of went back to that like being on my own doing my thing and then I randomly bumped into a guy that I used to graph with when I was like 14 15 hmm. and he was like yo we're rapping now and I was like shit so am I <laughs> <laughs> uh, all it takes like, is one catalyst only yeah takes man one. and he was like yeah come to the studio man I'm like what the well, these guys got their own studio okay yeah I'm gonna go there man <laughs> and then uh I linked up with this guy and we went to this 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 other dude's house that I never met man they had like a, a studio set up in the house and mic booth and everything it was sick and like I walked in and then like sat in the corner is men's what? Like, bro. What the fuck? And he's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? So like me and men's like sort of picked up kind of like where we left off graph when I was a kid and I was like fangirling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like we started rapping together, man. That um, is some mad serendipity. Yeah, weird. Really, really weird, man. Hang I didn't on. even know that the guy that I bumped into was actually like in the, the same circle of people as, as men's. Yo, that is... So we did tracks, cool. um, we did albums, we did loads of stuff, man. We ended up doing support for, I think with them, I ended up doing support with Jest. Big that was Jest. sick. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, man. So you got the emo... the North Star. Hold on, so you got the... So this is, was this still on the emo kind of rap tip? No, so this, this we kind of went down that like ill bill, fucking like mm. dirty underground, like bastardry rap type <laughs> stuff, man. That was just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. That, that like, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, we just went down that route, man. And like, we all fucking loved it. Non-fiction. Yeah, you know, that, that like... Necro. Boom bap, like, just... Horrible shit, Rather man. Rather rugged, man. That kind of shit. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, That was an alt kind of movement. That was an alt movement. Yeah, hundred percent. Like that was what we was into. Like, all, like weirdly, I was listening to that, and it, and then I bumped into them, and they were listening to that, and then like we just sort of like gelled, man. So you can say City Morgan and of course Scar Lord and them, but the, before that, there really was this scene that was it had that backpacker rocky, yeah, man. rappy. Fucking like men, men's is still making beats now, man, and they're fucking dirty. Hard, man. yeah, yeah hard. <laughs> See, that's my like, kind of shit. I really that's he really samples like. some stuff that you wouldn't even think of sampling, man. Mm. Like, hot, like he's mad into like his horror comics and like, yeah, 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 yeah you yeah. know them like low yeah, budget yeah, yeah. horror films yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. shit. But like yeah. the soundtracks from them, man, like he'll sample it and the beats. I'm telling you. If you need beats, hit up Menza, man. I'm That's telling you. Menza, yeah. If you like them horrible boom bap like horror shit, get hold of him. It's like Slayer for hip hop, I suppose. Kind of, yeah, man. Like he's just got a punch to the sounds. Um, and kind of like previous to that, I did support for example twice. Big up, Elliot. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's e. a crack. He's big E. And if you're ever in a backstage, like bopping with these guys, like examples. Yeah, man. He's he's the he, character. He, you he be bought well us with. a load of beers, man. Yeah. I always remember that, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I'm famous and you're sitting at home retired, I'm going to send you some beers. Hey, you need to get one of these looks, man. These are one of these hoodie looks. That's what Hit me mean. up, bro. There you go. Get the Instagram mm -hmm. off Keller. Mm -hmm. I'll do you something custom. Mm -hmm. um, and then, who else? I did support for Pro Green once. Um, I did support for Akala. Um, and also wasn't... Um, K-Lash. Yeah, K-Lash, Nikoff, yeah. We did a, li a little something for him. Mm. That was different. 
<laughs> what, what was it like transfer? I mean, Jesus, like as if I'm talking about two different continents here, but yeah, yeah. you know, there is a style to Birmingham and obviously the experiences are different. What was it like playing to like London crowd at that time? I didn't think we were going to be received that well, man. Because mm. obviously, like, we're, you know, you've got a, a group of five people yeah. that are all very, like, brummy. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no getting away from that. <laughs> Which um, we know and fucking love on the Killer Killer yeah, podcast, yeah, you know. hands down. Yeah. Um, but, like, I, I didn't think it was going to go that well, man. And then it, I, yeah, I was surprised. Mm. But I, I don't know whether it was because we were, like, so fucked up. Sometimes, sometimes it's just people were just like, "Wow, they're a bit hard, man." Oh man, I just but I love those ones where you're scooping a bit of someone else's culture into the game, and you're and yeah, yeah, yeah. That show becomes like actually that was a moment in time. That was fucking. You feel there if you're present when you see a show like that. That's the fucking best. Yeah, that like I mean, obviously that that's molded me into like who I am along my journey. Like all these little experiences and stuff like. I don't know how. I can't like pinpoint what what that changed and and how it. But obviously, where I'm at now, because mm. of all those experiences, mm. that's what's got me to where I am. But what, why the change of name from Far to P1? Like, I got <laughs> honestly, I got bored of the letters, bro. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you got to try it up? F A R. Like, there's only so much you can do with three letters, man. It's not like, a lot of paint, you see. It's not a lot of paint. Swinging. Nah, I, I mean, there is that, yeah. I'll spend, like, I don't know, double what I used to spend <laughs> on paint now. I mean, saying that, I didn't use to buy paint back then. That, that was when it was very accessible. And we don't condone any of that on the Killer Killer podcast, I might we, add. We, we, we don't, no. Mm. But um, <laughs> it was definitely gifted mm. by shops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ever so, ever so, so like, giving. Um, yeah, I just got bored, man. Mm. I got bored of the letters and I wanted to like challenge myself again because I got to a point where I was doing graph and I kind of started getting a bit bored of it. Mm. And I kind of wanted, I didn't know how to push what I was doing forwards because I'd kind of got stuck in a rut with them letters. Mm. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was trying to like evolve and, and kind of push it into different directions, but I kept falling into the same way that I formed the letter. Mm. I was just doing different things with it. Um, that must drive you batshit as well. After yeah, a while, it, like, fuck's sake, yeah. yeah it, I, I was getting to the point where I was like, literally, I need to change or I'm just like, I've got to give it a rest for a yeah, bit, yeah, man. Yeah. And then um, I remembered back in the day when I first started writing Far One, I, I used to write it P-H-A-R. Yeah. I was like, okay, so I spent a day in my room and writing like different ways of far one, like different spellings. How that, I P, put it. That, that P throw up you've done with the with eyes. The and, yeah, that's the iconic <laughs> one. I, that's the one that picks out of my head. I'm like, wow. That's the one, man. I yeah. love that little throw With that, man, I kind of feel like I can put a bit, a bit of my personality into that of like, hmm. I don't really take things that se <laughs> seriously. It ain't easy. And, and we big up everyone that's throwing characters and eyes and shapes and whatnot into the but it's very it's few and far between that it connects where it doesn't feel like it's overly forced yeah man it was just part of the letter man yeah like i i i, I use eyes and letters in like in in wild mm. styles and stuff that i do just because for me that's kind of like part of what mm. you know people see the throw up or whatever mm. um so yeah i kind of just i i was writing like p-h-a-r-w-o-n because and then I was like, oh, that's too long, man. Like, mm. I was like, why don't I just do a letter and then a dot? And then, mm. and then that, I, literally, I just sort of stumbled across like the P1. And then I started like doing a couple of outlines. And I liked how I could swing the P and the W to kind of like mm. f flow in together. Mm. And then the O before the N worked real nice with like the N as a finishing letter. So I kind of just like stopped with it for a bit. Mm -hmm -hmm. Didn't really paint anything, just did loads of outlines to so sort of like figure out whether I was on the right track. And then I, I kind of just came out with it and me and men just went a bit crazy with painting. Yeah. One summer I just did loads, man. I love the fact that you, you held fort and you just studied in the sketchbook. There is such a captive audience outside of graph. I feel, just my personal humble opinion, I always feel like there's a, a, 
an audience that knows in Birmingham that don't necessarily do graph. It just seems like it's quite an open for creative forum for people that just love, quote unquote, the street art of it all, and and are just fans of graph. Yeah, man. I think a lot a lot of that is like owed to Digworth, literally. Like yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that area, man. Like obviously, you know, like back in the day, like sort of like when I knew you when you was when I was a kid, man. Custard like, Factory crew. Custard Factory, man. That mm. was a spot, but it was at like. In them days, that was like out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like there wasn't anything else there. Yeah, yeah. That was the ammo dump, really... man. That was the place yeah, where you... Yeah, man. It was kind of like, jumps. while I'm in the club, I'm okay. But then if I'm walking home, then I need some people with me kind of yeah. thing. And big up the Rainbow Pub as well. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Rainbow was good, man. I, I used to love that place. Right? Yeah, the garden out the back. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. turn it into a beach and shit, man. Yeah, that yeah. was good. They had a good couple of uh, festival events there as well, like covered like, you know, drum and bass raves and stuff like that. Oh, and they had that, the, the open, um, they had like an arena as well, didn't yeah, they? The Rainbow that Arena. That shit yeah. was sick, yeah. Yeah, there were some big events there, man. Yeah. But like, I, I, I think in Brom that it's more accepted purely because of that area, man. That it's mm. kind of become that like, that cool area yeah, yeah, for yeah. like people that don't know anything about the scene yeah. to kind of be seen in. And if you're not if, if you're not familiar with it, I guess Leak Street is our equivocal or the embank. Um, uh, it's like yeah, it's like Leak Street, man, but yeah, like on it? a much much bigger scale. Huge, like it's a whole area. It's not just a street. Like yeah. it, it, you know, you you can spend what half an hour, forty minutes, an hour walking around there, and probably not yeah see everything that's no, no, that's right. Recently been put up. It's the best. I love it. it. Changes. It changes a lot, man. I remember me and Tempo were in the car and he was just showing me around and I swear to God, he was just pulling up, check that, check that, check. We were just laughing all way. I was like, yo, I can't believe, I can't believe t- how far it's come. Yeah, man. Like, he's another one. He, he like, you know, from yeah, when I was a kid, like... 33, all day. We, we, we used to cross paths back in the day, man. Again, he was from, like, a different side of Brom, so... Mm. Um, he's a, he's have, a good friend I, of mine. I didn't have a, lot, a, friend, man. a lot to good deal ones. with him, but, you know, like... Mm. I think I think some said like our scene is, even though it's it it encompasses a whole city, mm. it's quite a small group of people that do it. Mm. So like obviously over the years you do get to know like people probably like um more, not even like a friendship level more, you just know know about people more than just like oh that that's blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. He's in such and such crew. Like you, you actually get to sort of spend a bit of time talking to people and like, as your kids, like mm. as a job, you know, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's not just small talk, man. Like you do it's actually, community. Then, you, you end up actually like sort of knowing people, and then like you bump into them just random on a like you're out shopping with your missus. Mm. Like I, <laughs> I regularly see Zook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love yeah that. regular, bro. I love that you do. And we're that. like, yeah. What are you saying? <laughs> like, um. Yeah, it's like it's it's a nice little community, man. Like, I've, you know, obviously there are there are people that that keep themselves to themselves, but that's the same with anything. It's like with everything. Yeah, people in music do that. People in sport, like it, you know, it it that comes down to the person, not what they're involved in. Mm-hmm. You know who I rate? Epic. Epic man. So he Such a he bad man. he disappeared for a bit, and then. He actually came and painted Southside loads, man. Yeah, yeah. With like big up Gypsy, now big, big up, up Gypsy. Coffee. Yes, big up Coffee. Bro, Coffee oh, is the protege, what? man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, um, talk to me about talk to me about this because again, we're now getting into these these realms of like people like outside of outside of the UK. Like, yeah, what, what, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's yeah, let's really break down the the, the influences and and where these these characters lie in the grand scheme, if you don't mind. And and it's all okay. subject, obviously, to so like. Um, to this conversation. Coffee's kind of like probably one generation under where we were coming through. Right. Gypsy's the same generation as like me, men's... Bad man. Like some... Is in our bracket, mm. like our age bracket kind of thing. Not that age means anything, but mm-hmm. generally like it comes down to age mm. within the different, you know, sections of the scene mm-hmm. and stuff. Um Coffee, man. He was just a little kid. Used to just sort of kind of be there. Chipping away. Pure work ethic. Mm. And then he just started painting his fucking wild styles, bro. And everyone was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. <laughs> Yo. 
Like, I've got a lot of time for coffee, man. Like, he, for, for me, I think he even inspired me, man. In, like, just the what he used to do with his letters, his fills, that kind of thing. Like, it made me start thinking, yo, maybe I need to up my game a little mm. bit, man. Mm. Um, same with Gypsy. Like, Gypsy does completely different stuff to a lot of people that I've seen in Brum. Um but it still has that flavour, man. That's right. Like, yeah, we spoke, say, uh, yeah. everything has that flavour that's like a brum flavour. So Even so if to... it's different, it's got that, that like, backbone of brum in it, man. It has. Another point, big up uh, on you if you're not w w watching Mr. and listening. Corsa. Mr. Corsa. behind me, um, my guy. Um, yeah, and then, but then, then on the flip side, there's, like, people like Oust. And, um, See, so Oust is new generation, man. Yeah, yeah. as um, is Shaq as well, Shaq and Crutz. Yeah, yeah. Crutz, bro, Crutz is the new creme, man. You heard it here, probably not mm. even first, but I'm the first person that's going to say it. Crutz is the new creme of Brom, bro. I'm telling you that now, man. That's my guy. And and also, not just he comes, he's in London as much as, this is what it appears. He's like, he's always in London. He's, he cut, like, he's doing his thing. The way that I'd break it down, so Crutz for me, yeah, like lettering fills... And his passion for it mm. is like creme. Mm -hmm. And then his work ethic and his travelling between cities and his damage reminds me of Corsa. An all-rounder. So he does it, man. It, I, I would probably say that he's king of Brom Cena at a minute. Yeah, yeah, Big statement, but I, I would say that he is, man. Mm. And it's in good hands. I yeah, it's in good hands. I love watch I love seeing the progress. Yeah, it's in good hands, man. And it, I, I think the other thing is, like, as he was coming through, man, he was mad humble in it. Like, he was never a dick about anything. Mm. Um, he's got, like, he's got the old school mentality, man, of, like, what's important and what's mm. not. And, that like, I rate that a lot, man, mm. because, obviously, that's how we came through as kids. Like, if you were disrespectful, you got a slap. Like, yeah, 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 if you tagged it. in someone's background, you got a slap. Just gotta be cool to be cool, man. You just yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what like, you do. Do you? Yeah. Whereas, like now, it, I think because it's got so saturated and stuff with like, obviously with social media and things, it's more accessible for people. They don't necessarily have to have someone to teach them about graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, can yeah. just pick it up and go with it. But there are. So, I, I was talking to Noise about this. Big up Noise. Um, you know, he he. When I was in Brom last time, it's like there are. There's real. There's. Um, yeah, big up AFS, man. Like that's one crew that I know about. Um, that's like a younger generation yeah. that have got that. They're really picking that, up the... that old school. Like, yeah, they know what we what we went through as kids, and like they uphold it. But they got the template. They, 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 it's almost like you got to, you've got to start from source and from the right points that have been created. You Each one's just, each one, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, big up T Bone as well, all day. Yeah, yeah. Man, big there's tea. so many. I oh, did like. Tea. I'm now thinking, oh my god, like there's so much content and quality coming out of yeah, from at the, the moment, the, man. Fucking I, bonkers. I, I think for years we were kind of overlooked, man. Hundred percent. It was all like. I got with you. I agree. Obviously, oh, uh, you know, London, first city in it. But you make so much noise over there, guy. Like uh, honestly, you lot are just. I and I said this. So many times before on the podcast, it still holds true. I would, I love Birmingham. And when I came out of that station that first time, I see that whole place just, it ain't just, these are burners. <laughs> Mad. Mind blown, brother. That's it, man. Mm. We're, we're, yeah, the Brum scene's definitely got it going on, yeah, man. Yeah, it really does. Got some real hip, like heavy hitters too, man. Like, I'd say that a lot of people from Brom that are painting trains are making people that have been painting trains for years start mm -hmm. looking mm -hmm. yeah. at what they're doing. Like, yo. Yeah. Same as I did, maybe, like, with coffee. Maybe I got up my levels a little bit. What, what you th yeah, what, is, that, is that something that, that, that you're challenged by? Um, probably not, like, you, you know, like, I, I'm probably on a similar vein as some, man. Like, I... When you get to a certain age, I think you start, like, not giving a fuck about that, like, whole, like, bravado sort of, like, I've got to one-up everyone to make sure that I'm, my, my name's in everyone's mouth and that mm. kind of thing. I've gone past them years of wanting to be like that, man. Mm. Like, now for me, if I can walk away from a wall and be completely happy with what I've painted, mm. I'll maybe get a little bit of, like... 
praise for it off other people that I respect, then that's enough for me. Mm-hmm. Which is why I kind of started doing the GQ thing with the, the, the hoodies. And for me, I kind of set that up as a brand. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, what am I getting back? Mm-hmm. If I, I've got to a point now where I'm comfortable with what I'm doing and I know that I can do things on a certain level, why not make money off why it? Not? Yeah, why not? And respectfully so as well. Let's go into this GQ, the GQisms, you understand? <laughs> uh, you, this, is, this isn't just like manufactured by numbers. This, you are actually doing this. I'm allowed to say this. Yeah, yeah. You're doing this by hand. Yeah, You're man. doing this on a turnaround of one-to-one conversations. What do you need? I'll do that. And, and you've got a range. And what shape do you want? What yeah. size do you want? And you're doing it. Yeah, like... Sick. Yeah. So this is done. This was done bespoke. Shit's done bespoke. And yeah. I fucking love Mr. it. Mr. Keller. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm buzzing! Yeah, seriously, though. This is fucking sick. And, yeah, we won't get into the details. The, the secrets it's in the It's a science sort of. experiment, man. Yeah. So unless you're like some fucking alchemist like me, you're never doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he, he's, that's probably on a level of advisory as well because it probably, it probably takes a lot of hard work and a lot of headaches as well. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, man, I fucked up some tops. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've got them on my wardrobe, man. I just. Yeah, yeah, dust them off. Hide yeah. it, man, if I've got to do some painting or some gardening, you know, like old people shit. But it's a cottage industry and it's a way in which you just take, like I said, from ground up, you take some of those resources and things that you discovered and learnt on other projects and then you implement it. And through trial and error, you know, it's like what they said on Dogtown Z Boys, isn't it? You, 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 you make the surfboard, you paint the surfboard, you try the surfboard and if it works, it works. Yeah, That's yeah, the deal, yeah. Right? Like that, the, the whole hoodie thing, man, just happened by accident. I was like... I saw someone else doing it on YouTube badly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the dickhead in me went, I can do better than that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, at work, got myself a brush, got some bleach out of the toilet, you know, <laughs> <laughs> inventive. <laughs> and we'll say no more from there because you don't yeah, want to yeah, know yeah. how these things are created. This is a, uh, yeah. Got me an old hoodie and yeah. just... Gave it a Kind of just went in on it. And then, like, I posted it on on the, the GQism and thinking nothing of it, Instagram, just, to... just as a like, oh, look what I've done today. Not not even a like, oh, who wants to buy this or mm. um, this is going to be a thing or whatever. It was just kind of like, oh, I tried this today. What do you think? And then, like, within I think about two hours, man, I had like ten people messaging me like, yo, I need one of them hoodies. Hold Can on, you so make t- me one. So t- w- ten people, and what did you service? To well, I was kind of like. like Shit, I don't even know how to like. You know, where like, do I get the hoodies from? Like, that, yeah, like, like, like that. what, what, what? How do I start this? Like, I, you know, I've never run a business before in my life, man. So I was kind of like, where do I even like? Where do I start? Where do like? How do I get wholesale mm-hmm. hoodies? Where mm-hmm. do I go? How much are they? Where, how am I going to get the mm-hmm. money to mm-hmm. buy them? Um, and it kind of just went from there, man. And now I've, I think I've done probably like 40, 50 one of one hoodies. What? So oh, by none, hand. none of them are, yeah, none of them are the same, man. They're all, all of them are, so, so I'm going to say none of them are the same. Some of them are similar as in they've got similar shapes mm. or lines or, or, or whatever, but none of them are the same. It's, um, where do you see it going? Because obviously big up ASO Infantry, um, it's, it's right to say names like this in the podcast because they they take the graffiti ethos and collaborate with different graffiti writers yeah, yeah. and make products for the scene. Like, where do you envisage this? Because you're already like, you're, you know, you're like, what's it, 13K on your Instagram, things yeah, popping yeah, off, yeah. you're getting numbers and likes, and you're integrating the graffiti, the tagging, the, the Shekinah style, the, 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 the calligraphy style that yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you're focusing on. And le- like... I'll be honest, man. Like, I'm a Grebo at heart, isn't it? Like... <laughs> What's a Grebo? A gre- you don't know what a gre- Bro, this is education now. What's a Grebo? Talk so, to me. So a Grebo, yeah, is like... Bit like a metalhead, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all Grebos in here, baby. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? That, that, Love it. That's what I used to get called that. Grebo. Oh, you're a Grebo, bro. And, oh, wash your hair, man. You're like, wash my hair when I'll fuck your mum later. Yeah, that sounds like, like... Grebo sounds like it needs to be a band name. It probably is. Somewhere. It needs to be a band name. If that, like, if that's a, if that's if it's not, we're, we're, we're copywriting yeah, it right now, that's man. Right. We're gonna start that band. No, Creepo. Yeah. So Good. like, for me, it was kind of like I, 
I kind of wanted to go down a route of, I wanted to do like a crossover with graph, tattooing, metal music, that mm. kind of like, because it's like, at the moment, there's like a real weird like lane in fashion where there's like, it's almost streetwear, mm. but it's for metal heads. Mm. So it's got that like streetwear y kind of vibe, mm. but you wouldn't catch a guy that wears the hundreds wearing it. Mm, yeah. Metal heads get completely f fucked up with this shit. They can't stand well, the fact that it's. Uh, <laughs> and it's <laughs> like, oh, I, I, you know, like, obviously I'm into metal and stuff. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to wear like brands and things like that. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people get pigeonholed into the whole. Yeah, yeah. Like, that oh, shit's if, old as well. If you man. like metal, then you've got to wear a band yeah, yeah. t shirt. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, you like metal, that means you've got ripped jeans and nah. a fucking chain on your what? Like, I love going into metalhead bars and, mean... and looking like Timmy Mallet. I'm like, yeah, I'm here. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know it, it better than you. Yeah, and, and I, I know, know all the songs. And I know all the songs. <laughs> Come to me, man. Step to me, man. I know and this. I'm going to windmill. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me the mic on beatbox. Get that fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, for, for me, I kind of wanted to just do something that I'm interested in. Yes, man. Yeah. And, and push it down that route. And, it, yeah, it's kind of just like, it just took off, man. And I really wasn't expecting it to do what it did. It just did. Would I be would I be forward in saying there's a Brum approach to that as well? Because let's think about it. Metal in heavy heavy metal is Birmingham, Black Country. It's it's yeah, the man, Black it's, Sabbath. Aussie. Black Sabbath. Oh, the Judas Priest. Like it comes from there. It would be weird to not salute that world. Well, yeah. I mean, in like the if you look at. For example, now yeah, you look at like all these like thrash metal bands and like real dark, like, metalcore, like, screamo shit. Mm -hmm. You look at their album covers, man, it, it's it's a metal hand style. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. It, you know, like... Hand style it fucking is. But it's turned into, it's you know, it's got them certain things that make it into, like, that that metal thing. But it, it is basically, like, a graffiti hand style. And that kind of Norwegian look as well. The, yeah, the, the yeah, filter like a, look. Like that, a the, Viking, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. graffiti. Yeah, 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 totally. That looks like it was done on a photocopier, that kind of... Thing. Yeah, 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 like, dirty and horrible, man, but mm. I like that. Yeah, me too. It's the shit. <laughs> but, like, I like that crossover of, like, you know... I don't like graffiti being pigeonholed, man. I mm. like, you know, like, you look at a lot of, like, graphic design and you look at, Pete, you know, like, Virgil Abloh and people like that, man. A lot of what he was doing, y you can't tell me that he wasn't influenced, influenced by, by graph yeah. at True. some point on mm. some level. Mm. That destructive kind of, like, you know, it, and logos and things, like, a lot mm. of logos, like, people wouldn't be doing lettering of any form on that kind of level unless there was graph. Unless there was an influence. Because that's where, like, you know, like a lot of the graph in the 80s, man, it, it, the, the bubble letters and stuff that they started with came from, like, comic books. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Bode and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they evolved it. And yeah. then off the back of that, obviously people that were actual, like, graphic designers and, and people Cotton saw on. it and mm. went, hmm, okay, that's, I, I can use them letters uh, or something similar. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, Causa, on his podcast, he... There was a sense of urgency when he said it, and obviously a, a level of disgruntledness from, <laughs> from certain brands and whatnot that that take the graffiti principles of art, or at least model their thing on it on a on a particular yeah, yeah. culture, um, and kind of you know binge and purge for for its for the quality in that and and make it market and call it their own but it actually hasn't come from a an organic place well, do you know that, what I mean? that happened with um Reebok. okay i think it was h&m they yeah. they used a piece that he'd done on like a handball court in america or like in la somewhere right. as part of their advertising right. campaign um and from what I can remember he basically took them to court and said that he didn't give them permission to use that artwork in their advertising campaign, and they right. tried shutting him down and saying, like, oh, it's in a public space, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm pretty sure that he actually won, and it was the first case of its type that, like, a graph artist had took, like, a big corporation to court about them using artwork that was theirs, mm. and he actually got paid out for it <laughs> as a kind of, like, yeah, 
you know, like, don't take the piss. Which throws the cat amongst the pigeons, doesn't it? Entirely. Well, I mean, wh why and should they be allowed the, yeah, to do totally. that, man? Like, if we went and took one of their fucking logos and put it on something, yeah. we'd be straight in court. Totally. So why does that make it okay for them to, to plagiarise something that mm. you've done? For their... Intellectual property. Intellectual That's property, yeah. Intellectual, to, intellectual property. Yeah. And using that kudos to give them merit. Yeah, 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 like, oh, everyone knows who Reebok is. Let's yeah. use him. Yeah. Like, we're, fucked. we're not going to use him, but it's going to be in the background. So I think the a lot people of people. No, no. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have learned from that from that point, haven't they? I mean, mm. Ein, I, I would certainly, so. Ein certainly gets that with the in Shoreditch and across London. Yeah, because well. he gets his stuff used a lot, man. Yeah. Like, you see an Audi drive past. Talking about Ein, I've mm. seen one of his, his big pieces in Malaga, man. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. The, oh, big. yeah. So, yeah, it's fucking massive, right? Because yeah, you went out there, didn't we, you? Yeah, you and... me, me, Menz, and Aggie went on a, on a graph holiday. Graph holiday. That sounds really fucking like, oh, yeah, so we went on a graph holiday. <laughs> we went for one of those graph holidays. Yeah, we so were we drinking pims and having scones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we went, yeah, so we went on a graph holiday. You know, you can go into Thompson's or, yeah. or anywhere like that and ask them to give them the graph holiday package. Uh, and... We went to the, the, basically through the middle of Malaga, there's like a kind of like, for all you Bromheads, it's like the Digbeth Canal, but <laughs> super sized. It's like 15 miles long and about 100 meters wide and the walls are like 40 foot high. So we were getting pissed in a bar and we had paint and stuff, obviously being on a graph holiday. You know? mm -hmm. um, and we were like, right, okay, we're going to go and drop these dobs, man. We're going to fucking get wild, cause some damage, man. And from where we were sitting in this bar, this place looked pitch black. Like, we were like, we can go down there, do whatever we want. No one's going to see <laughs> shit. We'll be fine. We go down into the thing. And we're just, like, literally, like, one-upping this shit. You know, like, mm -hmm. one-up do, like, filling in. One person's outlining, next person. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're just blasting all these FT dubs all down this, this thing. And then, like, we turn around and there's like a crowd of like <laughs> Spanish people on the, the railings above this thing. Bravo, all like bravo. whistling and like, ah, I'm like, shit. So we were like, there with the camera full, crew, the fucking works. <laughs> we went into full like paranoid mode. Like we'd only been there two days. We were steaming like, right, we've got to get off, man. So we like went up these stairs and like onto the road. As we walked up the road, police car comes like driving up. We're like, shit, man. We're mm. like, getting fine, passport gone. Just that normal. Yeah. You know, you do that paranoid thing where you're like, just that normal. And you're like... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we did that, went into this bar and the police followed us in there, man. We're like, fuck, this is it. This is it. It's over. We've only been here two days. That's it, we're gone. And they, <laughs> they walked straight past us and arrested this old weird English guy that was just drunk and disorderly. And, it. and we literally were just like, wow. That was close, man. But yeah, we had like a, a, a whole fan club, man. Just stood I'm not, at the top of the thing. Man, I'm telling you, as, <laughs> as, a, as a fan and a conduit man, and there's a lot of people that are fans as well, I can speak for the majority in that uh, I couldn't live that life of just paranoia. <laughs> paranoia, yeah, man. It's too much for my constitution. We've had, I've had many of them, man. Nah, them. I'm not about that. I lost, I lost my ID on a bank card on a trackside. What, when you're painting? <laughs> yeah. Me, Explain me, this. Again, me, me and Menz was painting a trap side and a freight pulled up behind it. We didn't even know it was a freight line, to be fair. And we painted this freight and, um, like, the freight drove off and that and we packed all that shit up, took the photos and fucking... I'm on the bus on the way home and I was like, you know when you, you can just feel like oh, something's missing no. and that? I'm like, now nah, my phone's there. Worst I've got my life. house keys. And then I was like, shit, man. Uh, I dropped my... Driving license nah. on my fucking bank card. Nah. Yeah, driving license and a bank card on a trackside. So, be, <laughs> being a clever prick that I am, I mm. phoned up, I phoned up the bank and said, "I think I lost my shit on a <laughs> on a train, man." So if it was found, I could just blag it at someone. I thrown it out the window. Yeah, that's I mean? calculative. <laughs> that's good timing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I ain't getting caught for this shit, but I think I spent two weeks indoors like a hermit, man, thinking yeah, I was going to get my door booted. Just sweating, booted cold sweats. Yeah, yeah. That's just like one of many memories that I've got, man. Of like, just like close calls and stupid shit that you've done, do. like falling in rivers, getting yeah. stuck on fences, like. 
Well, ah, oh, this is this is one. So when I was a kid, right? Was oh, right, we got the stories right now, yeah, boy. We was right. <laughs> we was writing on the tracks in Selly Oak, right? And uh, the the police turned up on the fucking canal towpath. So obviously, like we're the other side of the fence. We're like, ah, oh, they can't get us, man. We're just gonna dip off. Mm -hmm. So we started going towards where we knew where we could get off in in a fence, like just up from the spot. And uh, it was a police dog unit, right? And the geezer, he had a harness on his dog on it, oh. and he lifted the dog up. And he put the dog over the fucking fence, bro. <laughs> what, just to go and get you? Yeah, bro. I, I'm not even lying to you, man. I've never ran so fast in my fucking life. I have never life, heard man. in my life someone just... That's like... That's like... Go, that's like you're stuck in a... And you just... Yeah, nah, that, man, that's not the one. That was a like, okay, I can't arrest you, but I can put my I'll dog... I'll have him come yeah, get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he literally just lifted him over the fence, bro. And, like, and I was running, man. Yo, what, that's <laughs> fucking heartless. Yeah, yeah, we got away though. I don't think anyone got bit, man. No, I don't think anyone got bit, man. But I, that that was a sweaty moment, man. That's that's what you call bring out the hounds. That's <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. We were like, what the fuck's he doing, man? He like lifted the dog off and just like looked at us like. Ha. <laughs> we were like, we better run. <laughs> He probably walked away, like, kind of, you know. Yeah, big alsatian, bro. Just lifted it over a fence. Motherfucker. And quite obviously, he didn't care because it was, like, after 12, so all the trains had stopped running. So, yeah. obviously, no, no, no animals were harmed in yeah. the, the creating of that story. No, that's um, fucking But, yeah, harmless. man, I dipped, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that shit. Um, but, yeah, man, like, just, yeah, 25 years is a long time to be doing it. Like, obviously, you know with your music and stuff, like, it's a long time to be doing something and not have it kind of, like, mould you who you are as a mm. person. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. Where can we get these divine pieces of articles? Where can we get them? So, Where? hit me up on Instagram, just at, and then GQism, mm. G-K-U-E-I-S-M. Mm -hmm. um, I've got my email on there, or just, direct message me and then it's 2022 so what's the future for you in 2022 my brother i kind of just ride in the wave of the hoodies at the minute man like, like like i said i wasn't really expecting them to do anything so at the minute i'm just kind of like just seeing where that's where that's going man and the tattooing still popping still yeah tattooing so i tattoo um like i said before reese's shop uh, i'm an apprentice so don't expect like crispy crispy mm. but i can do it I'm, I'm all right it's nice with it still yeah mm. i'm okay yeah, mainly nice. lettering um Obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I'm at Reese's Tattoo Studio, uh, Eye Candy in King Standing. Look it up. It's on mm -hmm. Google. Um, and piecing wise, you're still. Piecing, I just, I'm kind of like some man. I'm just dipping and out. Like, if there's an opportunity in a nice spot and I'm kind of feeling it, then I'll go and drop something. But, mm -hmm. you know, you get a family, you get your mortgage, mm -hmm. you try not to lose your job. <laughs> You know, you all fall into that that grind, man, mm -hmm. of like, you don't want to, but you do. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's a natural progression of getting older in it, I think. So, like, same thing. Like, I can't I can't be out there doing track sides and, like, I mean, I want to be out there doing track sides, but it, it yeah. Life it, happens. And you don't, you don't and want someone. happens. Yeah, man. <laughs> leave it to him, man. He's killing it for all of us. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm happy that, that that it's in his hands, man. Mm. Oh, and everyone else as well. Void, big shout out to Void as well. Yeah, Blah, Void. Void. Um, you know, there's just um, there's so many. I mean, I'm hoping I'm not missing anybody. But I mean, like, I can't shout out everybody that I want to shout out, but I'll just say Cruz because, yeah. you know, like. Safe. We've got FT, mm. always. Mm -hmm. Fuck Toys from back in the day. Um, FKS. Thank you. All day. Like that, that for me, that was like the pinnacle the of, of of my graph career was getting mm -hmm. into that, man. Like mm -hmm. I wanted that since I was a kid. Um, SSM, Big Up Zook. Mm -hmm. um, DLS, the Lagged Styles, Mr. Menza. Mm -hmm. We don't need to explain that. It's all in the title. Mm -hmm. um, and CRZ, man. Uh, I know I don't rep it too tough these days, but... It's there. I still like all the guys that are in that crew, man. Um, and NHS as well, I suppose. Mm. Like, some, big up some, hand style king. Yeah, because although you don't represent them all the time, they're still part of a Yeah, a, a yeah, yeah. They're, well, they're part of where you came from That's and right. like what, what your journey was in graph and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, big up T-Bone, mm. Big T, got mm. a lot of love for you. Mm -hmm. Zook, mm -hmm. the Godfather. And of course, Corsa. Who yeah, man. The, the, 
the, f- the flag holder of... of uh, and big up Creme, man. Yeah. I know you're probably not going to watch it, but big up Creme. Mm. Yeah, big up Creme. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, my no, brother. It's okay. Thank you inside the place. So, and, uh, thank you for having me down. No, man. Tea in the pot, drinks fridge, ash on the table, always. <laughs> my crew, hold tight. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, out like in was out of fashion. We're doing the service, man. This is street culture, man. You know, we do street culture over here. Stay lucky, people. 2022. Peace. That's it, man.